White Lie is a new Canadian drama written and directed by the acclaimed team of Yona Lewis and Calvin Thomas. The film stars Casey Roll as Katie, a college student who fakes a cancer diagnosis for attention and financial gain. Katie's life gets more and more complicated as she continues to spin her web of lies. We virtually sat down with Casey Roll to discuss the film. First of all, thank you very much for, for taking the time to speak with me. Of course, thanks for I wanting I saw the film, I thought it was fantastic. I, I thought it was great. Um, how did you how did you get involved in the in the, in the film to begin with? Um, kind of just like any other way, I come across a job. I my agent sent me a script and I read it and I was like terrified of it and, <laughs> and I had to do something with it or at least try to and um and the boys liked what I did and and we chatted a bit and then then bada bing bada boom. <laughs> I, this was this seems to be a daunting role to take on. Mm. Um, was there any, um, you know, you said you had to figure out what to do with it. W were you coming from, do you feel as if you were on the same page as, as y Yona and, and Calvin? Uh, I think so. Or yeah. I think we sort of wound up finding a common page. Like, I don't know if we're on the exact same page, but I felt like we could achieve what all of us wanted to do with it. Sure. You know, and... Um, I think they're pleased with what I did. <laughs> I hope they are anyway. What was it like? Uh, what was it like to work with the two of them? It was great. I mean, I think I had some like trepidations going in. I'd never worked with a directorial team and right. I had some sort of anxieties around like whether it would be like too many cooks or, you know, but it, they are one being. Yeah. And, like, they, com they communicate exactly what they both want really consistently. Um, they're just, they're, wonderful uh makers and just men too like they're really lovely and kind and supportive and they're like my little cheerleading section off camera it was really great i cannot say enough nice things about those guys i want to ask you about um a scene that was in the trailer that i don't believe it didn't make the cut i saw at least i don't know if it's a final cut but your, your head shaving scene ah. um and that's that seems like a really I would think personally that's got to be a very tough thing to take on, especially in front of the camera. Hmm. Yeah, so that that stuff they spliced into the trailer was actually our camera tests. That oh, was, was it? We shot film, and so we, we wanted to tinker and figure out exactly what we wanted beforehand. And they called me a few days before, and they were like, why don't we just shoot it? Like, who knows? Like, what do we lose by having it on film? And I was like, yeah, just <laughs> okay. I mean, right. I'm what have I got to lose, really? Um, and so... Yeah, I think coming into the project, like when I auditioned for it, it explicitly said, actress must shape her head. We're not wig capping. So I kind of knew what I was getting into and I um, I enjoy doing things like that. Um, I enjoy mixing it up and like, um, I don't know, it, it, it's, I'm not experimenting, but taking on things that are maybe a little intense. Right. And um, yeah, so I'd always wanted to shave my head and, and um, being a lady in the world, there's like a lot of stuff around that. Um, that w I was just curious to explore even outside of the project. Right. So then, I don't know, we got there on the day and I sort of made my peace. I like said my goodbyes in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just excited really, like more than anything. I, I didn't have a ton of nervousness because, you know, you just got to do it. And right. So was that not, if it, would they, did they have plans to put it in the film at any point? Cause I mean, I, I'm thinking if it was a money shot and you, you, something happens, you're, it's, it's a one take and you're, you're done. Yeah. But, but, yeah. It, but if this is a, you know, a camera test, then it's, you know, no big loss, I suppose. Yeah. I don't, I think they wanted to just have it just in case, play with it, see um, if they wanted to put it in anywhere, but it didn't really like it we didn't shoot it on a location that we shot right. at and um and we started the story well after she'd been living with her head shaved right so i think it was just like a little kind of experiment for all of us how did you how did it feel how did it personally feel to you oh my god a fucking fantastic <laughs> like it was so um liberating really and um i i think i'd sort of uh known like the the things that I had, you know, on a surface level that I'd wrapped up in my own hair um, and, you know, people's perception of me based on my hair and whatever. Sure. And 
shaving it off, it was like so much internal baggage was just like <clears throat> gone. It was so great. I highly recommend <laughs> shaving your head to anybody out there. Truly anybody. It was, uh, I, I was just so excited. And then as it grew back in, I had all these great like sensory experiences that I hadn't had, like wind on my scalp. Right. Had had some, I was a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Katie is, uh, I would say morally corrupt. Mm. Um, maybe that's a, a decent way to, to put it. How would, how did you, but as an, as a, as a viewer, we automatically kind of want her to, to win cause she's a protagonist. We automatically instinctively want her to, to, to win, but we know it's wrong. Mm. I'm just curious how you, um, what kind of motivation do you have going into a, playing a character like that? Yeah, I think, um, First of all, I'm glad we pulled it off for you. That's great. <laughs> um, I think, you know, uh, bad people or whatever you want to say, morally corrupt people still have a humanity that they right. exist in. And so my job was to, to find compassion for her um, and to really mine it and to um, be very thoughtful about what causes people to do things like that, you know, and, and, to, and to love her in that space. Um, and I, I couldn't spend too much time, you know, I don't, I think it was more the boy's job than mine right. to figure out if that was coming across, if she was likable enough or that people would root for her or like my job was to just, yeah, wrap her in compassion, even in the midst of all of these quite horrific things she's doing. Well, I always think of, you hear, you know, a lot of actors say that a villain doesn't think they're the villain of the story. They have their own personal motivation. And that's kind of what I yeah. thought watching this. I mean, she, she's clearly coming from a space, maybe totally. not a space that we can exactly recognize or understand, but there is motivation there. Totally. And I think, you know, I, hopefully people aren't watching this and being like, I identify with her hundred percent. If right. they are, that's who they are. But right. I do think my hope is that people will watch it and glean the, the shades of that that are in all of us, you know, we all, we all lie for some reason, we all keep things hidden, we all present a different self, we all manipulate to an extent. Um, yeah, so I, I hope that people are questioning that within themselves after seeing the film, because it's a, I think it's a thing we all deserve to think about. Your, uh, what I really liked about your performance is that there's a handful of scenes where things are going wrong mm. for, for Katie. <laughs> but she has to internalize that and still project an image of everything's fine um, to the outside world just to, to keep to propagate her, her lie. I'm just curious about how you approach a scene like that where you've got to, and I thought you did a great job. You, you can see you internalizing, this is a problem. I can't get this. I don't want to give anything away. But at the same time, you've got to still play it as if everything's fine. Yeah. I think... Um... I was really conscious that I didn't want the like um, machinations, is that the word, um, of of her covering to be super, super obvious because right. then it becomes too arch and too Machiavellian kind of. Right. I, I, I think for her, it's just the ball is in motion. She is a snowball rolling down the hill. And so whatever comes up, she just, there's, there's no difference for her between what is a lie coming out of her mouth and what is the truth coming out of her mouth. Sure. She's, speaking, she's moving forward. Um, so that's kind of how I, I covered that, I think. And um, yeah, and internalizing all of the panic that would come up. Um, yeah. It's very tense. I, I was reminded of when I used to watch Breaking Bad, I would yeah. often take a break like halfway through an episode because it's too, it's too much to take on. That's how I felt watching this. It was, there's a, there, it doesn't really let up all that much. There's no. no, there's no steam that gets let out a little bit at a time, but really it just keeps building and building. Yeah. <laughs> I hope people have good self-care routines around it, you know? Right. <laughs> it's kind of intense. <laughs> what was the, uh, given, given the, the nature of, 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 the, of the film, the subject, do you, what's a, how are you on set? Do you stay in character? Do you, uh, I mean, are you, are you that, do you, can you step away? Uh, you would just go on take and you're in and out. How, how you, how do you, um, how you on set when, with a film like this? Yeah. Um, I think it, it varies for me depending on what I come into the day with, um, what the scene is requiring of me. I do require or, uh, depend rather heavily on, on music and, um, oh. keeping that going throughout the day. So, um, 
even if I'm just hanging out, I'll usually have like a little headphone in and be vibing. Um, that's, that's the main thing. Um, there's a, uh, a scene towards the end of the film that's pretty um, intense between Jennifer and, and Katie and that I sort of stayed in that zone all day that mm. took us a day and a half to shoot. So I was locked in there, but I, I, I can't actually stay in it or I don't like to stay totally no. locked in that. I got to kind of come up for air and, um, you know, gather some breath and then dive back in again. That's sort of my, my process. Do you, your roles are fairly diverse. Yeah. Um, do you, uh, is a role like this something you, you tend to want to gravitate towards or is it something, how, how do you, how do you look out? How do you, you know, choose a role? Oh, um, <laughs> that's a great question. I think uh, a big piece for me is that I, um, I always want to be amusing myself in some way. It always wants to be um, igniting in some way. So if it's it, it, it's something funny, it's something I have to find legitimately funny. And, um, and there's always an element of, um, of, kind of spooking myself. Um, I always need to feel a little bit like some voice in my brain is like, ah, you can pull this off kid. Like right, that, right. that's always got to be part of it. Um, there always has to be a challenge that, you know, if I look at a project, it's like, I'm staring up at a giant mountain. I'm like, I have no fucking idea how to climb this, but here we go. Right. Um, so that's, those are the ones that are the most, the most interesting to me. Your, yeah. I don't know that there's very many um, Vancouver based shows that you have not been on. <laughs> I've done the round. What's the industry like right now in Vancouver? Over in Vancouver? Um, I mean, it started back up. Right. It's, uh, it's going good, pretty good from what I imagine. I mean, I'm, I'm not anything on anything right now right. just because I'm dropping something else. Um, but, but I've, I've heard it's going splendidly. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, um, where does, does this, you filmed in fact, and you filmed in Toronto and Hamilton, correct? Yeah. It wasn't, didn't seem like it was terribly nice weather at the time. Oh, it was so cold. <laughs> right. I thought I'd experience cold, like, you know, hanging out in Toronto in the winter or whatever, or, or even Calgary where my, my family's from. I was like, minus 30 is really fucking cold. Like, right. I got that, you know, and then you shave your head and you're outside <laughs> and like, you know, not a lot. <laughs> you're like, okay, this That's is funny. another this is another level. And right. it's like, it's a part of it is so exciting. Cause you're like, wow, bodies are incredible. Like what we do to like survive is uh, beautiful to me. And then you're also like, I, I was totally freaked out one day. It was the coldest day we shot. We got a surprise blizzard and we had to shave my head four times because I kept growing wow. five o'clock shadow on my head. And I was like, this is amazing, but also, disgusting right. that my body's just right. like pushing out hair right yeah again buffalo we're not that we're uh, you know yeah you get it not that far from toronto it's it's cold it gets cold very chilly <laughs> how does that affect your performance i mean you, it's got to be i mean i i can deal with cold but i don't have to emote on camera how does, how does that <laughs> i think um you know you, you you make the best of it and you kind of work with what you have um it's intensely exhausting to be that cold so that sort of adds a a positive like a good element I think it, it lends itself to this story <laughs> certainly yeah. and there were certain days you know if I was having to uh like really uh go to a certain place I was like we I need to have somewhere warm to go between and I need to run out at the last second and just do this thing right and then run back in because yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I'm sitting here and the cold stuff is going to freeze to my face and that's not good for anybody you know <laughs> do you is there anything in your life that you've had this level of um, secrecy that you've had to cover up? Have you ever been caught in a lie or almost caught in a lie to this level or any level that Ooh. you've really panicked? Caught in a lie. <laughs> um, not on this level. Right. Um, definitely not. I'm also just a, like a trash liar. I <laughs> no poker face. I know people are always like, actors are liars, like they're professional. I'm like, nah, dude, that's, we are, I don't think that that's that way. Um, I don't think so. Like maybe little thing, you know, within my family, like don't tell so-and-so and, you know, and I'll, I'll be panicking, even if it's just like, I got her a, 
I don't know, like a, a that book she wanted for Christmas. I'm like over here just panicking, you know. Tiny, How would you, anyway. when as an audience member watching, you naturally just put yourself in, in Katie's shoes. Like, how would I? assuming we would never do anything to this extent, but okay, how would I handle this? Do you feel that you agree or disagree with any of the decisions that, that Katie made? Oh my, well, yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I think I, I get it. I get why she made them. Are they decisions that I would make? I hope not. You know, who's to say, we never know what we're going to be like if we're painted into a corner, but I like to hope that I have some awareness as to when I am painting myself into those corners right. and sort of preempt any shitty behavior. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, of course I, I disagree, but I, I get it. Um, I, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I do have one, one quick question, completely unrelated to, to this film and I apologize. Sure. Uh, I was a big fan of Arrow. Um, oh, cool. There was, uh, there was um, audience fan speculation that Helix was being going to be spun off into its own series. Mm. Was that something that was ever presented to you or was that, uh, do you hear anything about a rumor mill about you and Felicity and, you know, the character um, being moved into your own series? Um, I don't know that I did. Perhaps in passing, but it's one of those things you maybe hear whispers of and there's no real right. evidence. Um, but I would be on a show with Emily for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite humans on the planet. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> I had a chance to interview Stephen uh, a few times, and he is nice. probably one of the nicest people on the planet. He's so Canadian. Yeah. Again, growing up in Buffalo, I'm, uh, we're, we're honorary Canadian. I get Gord Downey's right here. I was going to say it's Gord, totally. We got, we're honorary Canadian. So I've, 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 I've known a lot of Canadians. He's the most Canadian person I've, I think I've ever met. He's wonderful. He is so, and I got to say, like, coming onto that show that was so established and such a family um, it had been going for so long. Coming into that show was such a welcoming experience. Everyone, like crew, cast, way on up the line was so, so kind and generous and lovely and made me feel like part of the family, which was really nice. Very nice. Well, yeah. thank you very much for the time. Congratulations on the film. It's, it's wonderful. Um, good luck thank you so much. with everything. Thank you so much. Yeah, nice talking to you. You too, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye.